Okay, so I want to talk about something that I'm a little bit concerned about between even the Muslims, but generally in society as well, is this lack of uh, love for everyone. Okay, because nowadays love is conditional for a lot of people. They say, if you agree with me, then I'll love you or be kind to you. And unfortunately, this is even creeping into the Muslims who I've seen even people say shocking things like, I hate you for the sake of God, which Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, never said. He always said, love people for the sake of God, for Allah, right? And I've seen even Ali Dawa and some other people say things like this. Uh, and uh, you might say there are some limitations, like for a Zionist, there's a Zionist brother here, and I don't hate him, and people might find that shocking. But let me quickly quote people who are getting upset already. They say, you must hate Zionists, you, might ha you must hate this person, you must hate... The more you reasons you start hating people, the more reasons you'll find. Okay, and that's a very dangerous downhill spiral. I want to quote something from Prophet Muhammad, or from the Quran. Um, one thing is, uh, it says, "And we, that is God, have sent you, which is Prophet Muhammad, not any, not for any other reason except for a mercy for all people. That's all humanity. Yeah. Okay. Not." This person or that person or Muslim or not was everyone, even the most terrible person. You have to have mercy for them for the sake that one day maybe they will change their mind. And they will reform themselves. Yes. Yeah. And, so, and Prophet Muhammad said, all the creatures are the children uh, of God. The most beloved one to him is the most beneficial to them. And the best service we can to, we can do to humanity by guiding them to their creator. Beautiful. Um, another one is uh, from again from the Quran. Um, this is about we have a lot of debate here, and some people disagree and sometimes become rude. And so, what is the Islamic point of view on how to deal with those kind of discussions? Uh, the Quran says, "And the servants of the gracious God." Okay, so it introduced Muslims and reminds them if they are considering themselves servants of God, who is God? The most gracious. So this is the way, the main, the number one way God in, dis, introduces himself in the Quran is the most gracious. I mean, somebody who gives so much without expecting anything back. And he gives that. Even those who abuse him day and night, swearing. Um, again, uh, on him or against him, using a full language, bad language, but still he's still providing them with the, the sun, air, food, and he hasn't done anything. Regardless, even the atheists, even those who do, who don't believe in God, still that he's providing for them, directly or indirectly. Beautiful. And so, I mean, people might be wondering why I'm talking about this. this is exactly why I'm talking about it. Because we, if you want to attract people to God, then you've got to demonstrate, if you're a believer in God, you've got to demonstrate that through your behavior. And one of the reasons I'm talking about it, because let's keep it real, I think uh, my brother or my uncle, I should say, here, Simon, has been put off by a lot of the behavior of Muslims. So Simon here is a Muslim, but he's been put off by their behavior. And maybe if they saw the true reflection of God in his so-called followers, or, you know, then he would be less put off. Any thoughts about that? Oh, sorry, actually, you know what? I, I'm very bad at, I start making a quote and then I don't finish the quote. Let me quickly finish the quote and then I, so about discussion. Yeah, I, I said the first word because when the verses of the Holy Quran are so beautiful that you get stuck on the first word and you feel like explaining it. So the servant of the gracious God. So every Muslim should be a servant of the gracious God. So I talk about what gracious means in the sense. Uh, are those who walk on the earth modestly or humbly and when the ignorant address them or argue with them they say peace they don't even they don't even hate them they wish them peace and so the the, the in Islam or a Muslim and even in Christianity and Judaism uh, it's a way of saying hello and goodbye so it could mean and in French they say salut which salut. means salam ah. salam salut salam 
Interesting. So it could mean that first of all, you've got this attitude of if somebody's being rude to you, you don't even be rude back to them. You just say you wish them peace, and that's the jet. That's the that's the reflection of this idea of being gracious. You give them even if they're being rude to you. But also, it could mean、um, that you say. You leave them alone. You say salam, which is a way of saying goodbye. But you say goodbye in a polite way, rather than leaving them and say I hate you. Anyway, Simon, as somebody who's kind of been put off by some、uh, some of the behaviour of some of the Muslims here,、uh, just share your thoughts openly. You can you can be as negative or positive, whatever you feel like. Please say it, share it. There's only one Creator, Allah. First of all, secondly. You mentioned the word love. How do you, how do you define that? What is it? Can you explain your interpretation of what love is? So I like to try to stick to what the Holy Quran says,、um, and there's so many beautiful things. So the Holy Quran describes your neighbour in so many different ways.、Uh, even a person who's just standing next to you while travelling or you're working with, you have to be kind to them. So that's one way. Uh, and there's a kindness, as in like treating them like everybody's your family, like your brother or sister.、Um, uh, any other ideas of what love is? Would you describe? There's so many sayings of Prophet Muhammad about kindness, but any any thoughts about what love is in Islam? I say all about serving the mankind, because as I, as I stated before, the, the the all the creatures are the children of God, the most beloved one to Him. The most um, uh, beneficial to his crea- uh, uh, creatures, like you know, for example, here in the UK, if you are serving your own community, right? You go some at some point. I know someone who got an,、um, a medal or a, a, something from the from the king, right? It's it's kind of a prize you get for serving your community. So similarly, like a knighthood or an MBE or something like that. I, I don't know exactly what it is called, but you get it, I think, from from your local MP or something for serving for serving your own community. Similarly, if you serve the the mankind, regardless whether here or in different country, you get some you get rewarded, and that's how you attain the the love of of Allah the Almighty. Otherwise, as we say, like someone could say, the servant of the gracious God. Does God need servants? No, He doesn't. Similarly, here, does the King need us? Well, of course, He doesn't. But if you serve your own community, you get honored by the、uh, by the King or or by the authority. Same thing. If you serve the mankind, you get honored by God the Almighty, the Creator. So to say what you said, uh, uh, in a way, is. The you are beloved. The most beloved of God is the one who serves other people most. So that could be a way of describing love.、Uh, what are your does does that answer your question in any way or help you in any way? It, it, that will create love as well. That will create love. I, I, I take on board what my brother says.、Uh, in order to love someone, do we do that? In order to get reward.、Uh, What does it say in the Quran about receiving reward?、Mm, what is the Quran saying about receiving reward? Good deeds. You yes. Do, you have to compete when it comes to good deeds. You have to be. You have to compete with each other in doing good deeds. And in fact, when doing good deeds, that's how the universe will progress and will prosper. If everyone is sitting idle, of course, all these beautiful things will not happen. Of course, you could you could argue and. Because if it is commercial or because the, the, you get money, yeah, that's co- that's that's correct. But at the same time, when you do these things, you feel a sense of achievement. So that's why you have to compete in doing、uh, good deeds. So you've asked two questions.、Uh, one was what is love, and that is to be kind to everybody.、Um, and then you asked another question, which is. What is a good deed?、Uh, also, how to get reward? And reward is from、uh, what、well, you said about competing with doing good things. And、uh, God rewards you.、Uh, another one about reward is you get one reward for your intention, another reward for your actual action. Because you can't always control your actions, but actually implementing your good thought. But now my question to you. As we're focusing on, I want to promote this idea of love for all and hatred for none. I'm interested. In what was the what what was the what was the reason for your question about why did you ask about 
um, what is reward and what is love? Does what is the definition of love and does it truly exist? If you say you love someone and then expect reward in return, that is that is n not then love, is it? It can't be. Yeah, I, I, I like that. Yes, I like this yes. because you know, like why we have to love the Creator because look. He created us from nothing. He created everything around us for our service. So yeah, I, I, I do agree with Simon uh, on this point that you should, if you, if you expect something in return, that will not be love, which is true. Because look, why do we love Allah? He, first of all, He created us from nothing. He provided for us everything, food, sun, air, everything, without us doing anything. Beautiful. I think I like your question because people are so confused about love in the West. They, they so even romantic love, it's not real love because they only fall in love with the person who loves them back. They want something back from it. They want, they want to show off this is a good looking person or whatever. This is not real love. And I think that's why your question is so important because people have forgotten what love is. And it's shown in statistics. I love my statistics because it kind of helps people understand that in England, I think this is what I understood, we are the most isolated because we only talk to people who agree with us. Okay, which is the opposite of love where you talk to people who even completely disagree with you. So a lot of people watch my videos and they're surprised how they say, oh, you're very calm in the videos. I say, listen, I've no problem because the person who's rude to me, I only feel sorry for them. I don't even feel angry with them. You know, I really genuinely feel sorry for them. So I have no hate. I only love them. I really, when they, you'll see my videos, some people are really rude to me. And I'm saying, peace be upon you. You're my brother and I don't hate you, even if you hate me. So that's my idea of love. Um, what are your thoughts about that? Uh, what conditions are they uh, uh, in terms of uh, lo loving the creator? It's like a, a relationship. You can have someone who tells you that they love you and that's because you've got lots of money or you've got lots of power, lots of prestige uh, but as soon as these things are gone <laughs> they're gone <laughs> you know so it's the definition how do we find love um, so that's a very interesting idea so people are very suspicious of each other nowadays as well so you brought up another point where there's a scenario let's say I've got lots of money and people show me love and you're suspicious of them and you're in a in the hidden question in what you're saying is that should I love them back okay but if we go back to what we're talking about what love is love is for fr I give for free and also this idea of suspicion in the Quran it says do not be suspicious of other people because somehow sometimes suspicion leads to falsehood so we have false ideas of them people are very right. suspicious of each other i feel like even in uh, just normal communication people say these words that like you're looking down on me when you're talking to me i can't remember the word there's a un, un, very unfortunate words people use with each other right um that they're very suspicious of all their intentions when you don't know their intention, even when somebody's trying to be nice, people are suspicious of that kindness, right? Um, and that's caused people to separate a lot more. In the Middle East, people um, are a lot closer and they're not suspicious of each other. My my cousin or my brother in oh whatever you call it, cousin-in-law from my wife, uh, he was telling me a story when he was new in this country. He was uh, playing football with some children. Oh, yeah. Yeah? yeah and... Yeah. No, it's a good story. It's a very important story. Come on, let me tell it. Is it all right? It's a very important story. Hi, John. Oh, hello oh, there. On, hey, join us oh, if you like. Oh, oh, oh. Are you recording? Here? Yeah, we're recording. Yeah, yeah, I'll leave you. Okay, okay. Yeah, come on. Nice we'll see you in a bit Enjoy if you want. the sunshine. Yeah, we're getting the sunshine. We need as much as we can. Would you say it would come? <laughs> <laughs> so he was it's just to, de to demonstrate this idea of a suspicion, right? Because really... It's central to this idea of love as well, right? Um, he was new to the country. Can I? Please! 
This is really important. Please, 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 please. Because I'm going to tell a, an, an additional story from Jordan as well. When I lived in, he he's from Syria. I lived in Jordan. I went to Syria as well. Lovely people. I've met his, uh, I, I think I'm going to tell a few funny stories actually. Okay. Um, so when he was new to this country, he didn't know some of the the very negative uh, fear people have of each other. Each other. So in Jordan or mid in Syria, people are very relaxed with each other. They're not scared of other people. So he was waiting for somebody in the park, and while he was waiting, he saw some kids playing football, just kicking the ball around, and he said, "Can I join you?" He started kicking the ball around right. with them. Right? It's beautiful, right? And you have. I would do. This is something you would do from the old days, right? Like just from last. last we never had footballs in my day. Yeah, <laughs> we couldn't afford them. Right. And people we had to make our own. Yeah. In yeah? Syria, we used to make a board from papers, exactly, <laughs> and exactly. then just put solar tape. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And so, what happened was, they were playing along fine, and then he asked one of them for their name, and then the the kids got scared and told the dad, and the dad said, "I'm looking at you. I'm watching out like this, right?" Wow. And he called the police, wow. right? But in Jordan, when I'm in Jordan, right, I remember one of my kids was about to have an accident on a play crew, and one of the dads just picked him up, didn't ask me permission, because people have no suspicion of each other, and actually, what happened is a vicious cycle. The more people are separated from each other, the more corrupt they become internally because they have no like. Where did pedophile come from? Is that they? So he they were basically suggesting he was a pedophile just for being friendly, right? Okay, which is really messed up. But where did Absolutely. pedophile? I mean, I understand exactly where my brother's coming from. That's the little boy in him coming out, wanting to play football with other. I was, I was people. Waiting, I was waiting on my friends, and I saw them playing football, and then yeah. I joined them, and they didn't mind. Yeah. And then, uh, they, you know, in Syria they are. Oh, what's your name? Yeah. And then, and then they Listen, come. I, I, I totally understand, and I take your point. This society is is it is messed up. Yeah. There are a lot of suspicions out there, uh, in terms of, you know, if you see a stranger, you've got to be careful. And this all comes from our media. Uh, you, you know, you've got to be. Listen, English people can't even live together as neighbours. One moment you're getting on with your neighbour, and then the next minute they're arguing with you because you parked on their drive, or your dog has just done a poop on their lawn, or y y your husband is looking at my wife. You see, they, they can't even live together. Let they alone. can't even live as family. And in Christmas, Christmas is the biggest time for family Absolutely. fights. So never mind neighbours, not even people in family. So don't don't be offended by people like that. No, I was, I was um, calm. I mean, when they came, yeah, I was calm. Yeah. Because I knew I didn't, I didn't do something wrong. Yeah. And then it was just on the matter of asking me like uh, ID or something. I, was, I said, look, I even work for a diploma. I mean, I'm not like... I'm not like someone came from the street. <laughs> you don't have to explain yourself. You don't yeah. have to explain yourself. I know exactly what these people are like, and it, it's getting worse. It's and you've worse. you've experienced that in your own way. Like you just when you go to a shop, you like to be friendly and say how how are you doing, love, and all this kind of stuff. And just by saying love, I do all the time. Yeah, and people go, they get offended by well, your kindness. I'm from the up north, yeah. Yorkshire, and that's how we speak. Yeah. And I've been pulled up a couple of times down here in the south yeah. for saying those things. But here's the thing. I will never change, and I won't change. I will be myself. And and, and the idea of prosecuting me for calling, hey, up, love, how are you, darling? No, that's your problem, not mine. Yeah. So keep it. No, and stick to your ways, and that's why exactly. people like you. Yeah. Like you said, somebody, some people. It's not that you want a free coffee or something, but because because you're so genuine with them, they, you know, like, oh, uncle, here's a free coffee and all this kind of stuff. This happens to you, right? You were saying earlier on. You guys just got two free. You just have got a free a free hot chocolate from from my uncle here. No. From that beautiful Muslim lady in the, uh, there. Oh, I didn't know that. Exactly. Okay, so we're she having a. Uh, coffees for us. Oh, exactly. Ah, oh, beautiful. So we're going to say Jazak. Thank you very much, your sister. See how the Creator works. Yeah. So we didn't even know that. We were just. Ah, we're well, having these hot chocolates. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Through and. Uh, through this angel. Yeah. No, no, no. Hey, come on. 
Well, there's a lot of angels around, they're humble everywhere, they're everywhere. God bless You've got to be careful of them. Some are a bit dodgy, <laughs> especially the ones from up north, Yorkshire. Yeah. And yeah, I just yeah. want to say, a lot of the, like, I don't even hate, it sounds weird, but let me explain this idea. I don't necessarily hate ped. I don't hate anybody, and I don't hate paedophiles. Let me explain this. Really weird, but it's like, where do the paedophiles come from? When they're so we're lonely and messed up, yeah, we I feel we feel sorry for them. Not, we want them to reform themselves. Not just that, but I say, how did they become paedophiles? Because they're so everybody's so separated from each other that, and they have no relationships are zero in this country. Marriages are falling apart. They have no connection with uh, they even in their neighbours. They and then eventually they they end up getting corrupted inside, and they try to find relationships with other men, or I mean, like homosexual relationships or whatever. All this kind of s corrupted stuff happens because of the existing problem. It's like a vicious cycle, you know. Um, there's all sorts of stories I can talk about. Like when I was, uh, I'm not going to try to make too many stories, but it's like I want to share another story of the opposite of like when I was in Jordan, I was working with a teacher in the Middle East, next Jordan, next to Syria, his country. And so I'm in the teacher's lounge, and one of the kids come up, which is a five-year-old or six-year, I don't know how old, right? And one of the teachers picks up the other, you know, it's like one of the teacher's kids, and one of the teachers, another teacher, just picks up the kid and kisses him on the cheek, right? No permission asked, right? And I said, that's beautiful to that teacher, and I said to him, uh, you know, in England, you can't do that. And I said, then he was confused. Said, Why? Because he said, um, and I was a bit embarrassed because I know how stupid it sounded. Like he said, in England, they always think you're a pedophile. And he was shocked you because know, me, it's such some... corrupted thinking here. You're right. And one of the most beautiful things that I've seen is Muslim men who have brothers and uncles and what have you. When they see their nephews and their nieces, they pick them up and they kiss them. It's a wonderful thing to see. You can see how close these people are together. But th that very sort of like tactile, tactile thing, you don't see that very much uh, now in, in this country. It's all very, it's far too serious. And far, people are far too cautious now. Yeah. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. It's don't a bad know. thing. It's a really bad thing. Uh, and I also, here's another thing I'm going to jump into a little bit. Um, the, you were talking about how like there's a kind of a personal distance they call it or s personal space yeah. which is uh, in England is the most in the whole of Europe probably in the world probably right people keep an average distance of like 80 centimeters one the point is that they are not tactile as in hugging but in Islam we always hug and shake hands it's actually ex it's wrong it takes a bit of getting used to you know yeah. like my brother yeah. welcomes me gives me a hug for me, it's a wonderful thing, feeling that somebody appreciates you and actually does like you. It's a wonderful thing. But it's very rarely seen in British society yeah. that men can do that because it's seen as a homosexual gay thing sort yeah, yeah, of thing yeah. you know and so i want to bring that into sort of homosexuality i think people are go turning towards homosexuality some men especially because they feel because of their british upbringing and western upbringing they can't show their emotions and muslims uh, cry they share like joy together they shake hands in fact there it's not by accident prophet muhammad said you must shake hands you must offer say peace you, all these things are a must on a muslim yeah. when they meet each other right yeah. because if you don't you have this uh, destruction in society thought things let me just explain this things naturally fall apart unless you have strong rules to keep you together right so islam really pushes this connection with people and that's why i feel sorry for a lot of people who are uh, homosexual who i think are going down this path because in a way to they try you know like there's some gay people who kind of try to act like women they wear handbags and things like this right because they're missing what so british society says this, as a man you can't show any emotion so they think if you're homosexual they do that's my feeling and i think it's also with the 
transsexual people, right? They they say I'm a woman because I feel like a woman, and maybe what they're really saying is, as a man, I'm not allowed to show my emotions, and maybe if I pretend I'm a woman, I'm allowed to show my emotions, like the women. Rebellious, rebellious yeah. against the the, the the tradition. Not just not just rebellious, but I think fresh kind of missing a lot of stuff in Western society. You're missing so much. You can't even show your emotions and love for each other. Um, and so that's, I think that's one thing that's missing. Um, so I'm glad we talked about what is love um, and this high idea of uh, suspicion as well. That's been a big problem. I mean, when, you, when, you, when you shake hands and you give your brother a hug, it creates a connection. Yes, the harmony. And Absolutely. Yeah, and affection. Yeah. yeah. And, and you're not afraid of that person and you want to get to know each other a little bit more, share things about your culture, where you're from. Uh, what your background is, where you think you're going. You know, you've just quoted two, you have talked about two prof sayings of Prophet Muhammad in one go, right? One is, and he, this is amazing, I'd say Prophet Muhammad is the greatest psychologist of all time. He said, and this has been proven in psychology now, he said, he said, shake hands because it removes bad feelings from your heart. So you just mentioned that, right? And psychologists have said, um, oxytocin he said by hugging and shaking hands it creates bonding oxytocin generates so Prophet Muhammad said that and the second thing you said about uh, about each other learning about each other Prophet Muhammad said when you want to if you uh, want to connect with someone he gave this very clever advice he said find out about um, I can't remember the first thing about his people basically find out about ask about your father and their people which is where you come from yeah, yeah. and then what you do is you basically connect you start that's a clever way of building talking on. building about your history and yeah. stuff like that and who you are yeah. so these beautiful things that you just mentioned prophet Muhammad suggested them so i'm glad we've gone into all these different directions um and when you sit with to, sit together with people Break, break bread together, eat together. This could create harmony and, and friendship. This is actually people here. They apply it, but at a very basic stage, like they do coffee morning. But when you share food together, it will create even much more love and affection and harmony. Yeah. Yeah. And that's actually a very strong thing in Muslim culture. I say Muslim culture, religion, really. Um, this idea of eating together. There's a famous word for it, Kullu Jumay. Jumay? Yeah, I think uh, those who who stay together, uh, pray together, and maybe pray together, maybe, or something like that. Anyway, anyway, the point is, that's another a really interesting idea about building love through food. Um, that's one thing. And maybe just to finish it off, and then you can make any other interesting comments. Um, not necessarily, by the way. Not necessarily to influence the influence influence them or to make them. Some people say, "Oh, you want to gather them too because you want to make them Muslim." No, it's just out of because we are humans at the end of the day, right? And, and the humans they cannot live isolated, right? They 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 will always live together regardless if they are religious or not religious. The 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 the, the the, the beauty of being together and not being isolated. I had heard you have once there was an advert that there are nine million people in in uh, feeling lonely in this in the UK. Now imagine nine million people like we have six six million and nine million out of them they are just um, feeling uh, uh, suffering from loneliness, which is a huge. Thing. It's actually the big, loneliness is the biggest killer in London, which is amazing. It's shockingly sad because we're so tightly picked together. How can we avoid each other? People do. You can't even smile at people on the trains over here. You can't make eye contact. It's like some big sin over here for some reason. Um, it's really, really sad. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and then just to finish it off, because this whole, this whole idea came to me why I had to bring it up, partly because I've always been talking about the separation of people, but even here, people find it rude, they encourage somehow to be rude to each other because you get more views, which is really sad. Please try not to watch videos just because they're fighting each other. Um, that's not good. Uh, and if you're a Muslim and you think that's good, let me quote this uh, teaching of Prophet Muhammad. He says, most certainly gentleness is not found in anything except that it beautifies it. So by being gentle, you make your actions more beautiful. And it is 
not removed from anything so you make them uh, and uh, removed from anything but it disgraces it so by removing your gentleness from your discussion you disgrace your own behavior people you'll be shocked by your behavior and that's what my friend has found here as well when i'm debating sometimes with people i remember with the sheikh muhammad and people like that you were like really shocked by his behavior even though i i don't know if you remember i always told him you're my brother and peace be upon you even though he was being rude to me um i think it does disgrace a person by through their b bad behavior and i hope that all people but including the muslims who are supposed to be torchbearers for society they should realize that fighting being rude does not promote islam at all it insults prophet muhammad who we love so much because he did the opposite of that any last uh, you can say the last thoughts or maybe uh, any any thoughts uh, just love your creator there's only one creator and if you are a true muslim then you've got to love all muslims uh, muslims this is what your prophet preached and you should love everybody because the first verse Absolutely. first verse that i quoted was and it said to prophet muhammad that he is mercy to all of humanity so there should be no excuse to be rude to people because literally literally there was a time when he was leaving a town where they were pelting stones at him and god said to or god sent an angel saying these people these terrible people if you want i can um make these more mountains uh, uh, hang overhanging the city crush on them and he said no i pray that even if these people reject me their followers would one day accept the one true beautiful god um i'm not sure i added the word beautiful but that we we i can't remember the exact words yeah so there should people should not make and this is so important in today's society don't make excuses to hate people have love for everyone don't make exceptions right. because as soon as you start making exceptions you make more exceptions as to what any more excuses for hating people uh, and remember the role of the muslim is to try and bring non-muslims to islam so they are potential brothers and sisters so you cannot treat them in any other way other than what the prophet muhammad tells you that you should be doing so which that, you just pointed out so that they can improve their lives and hereafter because mm -hmm. now people they say the religion is the source of problems okay we don't we don't have religion now no one consider themselves religious even the christians here they don't consider themselves christians anymore except by name but these things are improving no things are not improving in fact morally people are going backwards so it's not the religion so so we cannot just blame the religion for the sake of blaming it so what uh, our job is to um to spread the true the beautiful teaching of islam so that we can attract those people with the, the genuine people who really are lost in this life so that they can improve their life and the, the, in in this world and hereafter that's right Let's end the video here. Absolutely freezing cold. So let's finish it. And I appreciate you uh, sitting around doing this. Peace be upon you. Salam.